Wow! We're standing on Great Strand Street in Dublin, which is sort of halfway between Capel Street and the Italian Quarter, and outside number 64, which is the Destiny Christian Church. Now, if you sent a letter to 64 Great Strand Street in the 1930s, it would have gone to the Revolutionary Workers Group. This was the headquarters of the communist movement in Dublin, and men that went to fight in the Spanish Civil War against Franco, for the most part, would have enlisted either here on Great Strand Street or would have gone from London uh, and on to Spain from there. Great Strand Street in, in 1933 was the scene of some pretty intense street fighting uh, during the Red Scares of the period. And this building, 64 Great Strand Street, was attacked for three nights in a row by a religious mob. I suppose there's something ironic about the fact that religious mob attacked the building in 33, and today it's a Christian church. Now, when we talk about the Red Scares of the 1930s and, 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 and the blue shirts and the like, we have a habit of making light of it. This is that great joke about the blue shirts, that the only army in Irish history that came back with more men than they left with. But the blue shirts were a very serious you know, street politics organisation. They were taken very seriously by the police and indeed by the IRA of the time, who called them the Higgins Gang and, and saw them as a real threat. And anti-communism in Ireland wasn't just limited to the blue shirts. You know, the anti-communist movement of the early 1930s was a street protest movement of thousands, indeed tens of thousands, of Irish people. In 1932, remember that we had the Eucharistic Congress here in Dublin, which led to like a huge outpouring of, of, of Catholic feeling. Anti-communism came to the fore during the Eucharistic Congress. Uh, the Irish Monthly, which was a Catholic magazine at the time, famously said, there is a coming conflict in Ireland, and that conflict is between the forces of Catholicism and communism. That was the belief among the Catholic Church in Ireland, that there was a showdown inevitable with communism. Remember that in the election in the early 30s that brought Fianna Fáil to power for the first time, Cumann and Ail, the outgoing government, had that famous poster, keep the red off our flag. And that image of a tricolour with a red flag superimposed on top of it, attempting to present even Fianna Fáil as a communist menace. You know, when you read the Irish Independent, the Irish Times today, if you search for, you know, in the archives for communism, the scale of the Red Scare in early 1930s Ireland just cannot be overstated. Remember a third of Dublin are living in slums. People see the slums as perfect ground for socialism to grow in, as fertile ground for socialism. In March 1933, anti-communism in Dublin reaches fever pitch and it, it, it descends into violence and the worst kind of street politics. Why March 1933? Well, one thing that happens, the St. Patrick's Anti-Communist League are set up early in the month of March 1933. They're set up in Parnell Square on the north side of the city. Their members wear the Sacred Heart badge and they're told to pray for the downfall of communism across Europe. Remember what's going on in, in, in Spain, you know, a traditionally Catholic country where the left are rising. Catholics in Ireland are terrified of this red menace, the red, the red monster under the bed. Between the 27th of March and the 29th of March, 1933, over three nights, there's very intense violence on the streets of Dublin, motivated mainly by religious hysteria. And the roots of it are in the pro-cathedral on the north side of Dublin. On the 27th of March, there's a, a particularly vicious sermon delivered at which it said, the monster of communism is among us here in Dublin. And one young man, Bob Doyle, was among, the, uh, was among those in the pro-cathedral on that night. And he remembered that hundreds of people gathered outside the pro-cathedral on the night of the 27th of March, made their way here to Connolly House, Great Strand Street. They were told this was the centre of atheism and evil in Dublin and laid siege to the building. And he remembered Doyle that as they were attacking the building, he wanted to peep inside to see if they had the great big beards that the priest told them communists always had. They laid siege to the building on that night. When the fire brigade arrived, they attacked the, 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 the fire engines, cutting the hoses. The next day, the Irish press ran with the headline, Hooligans Attack Connolly House. And Bob Doyle said afterwards, he just felt there was something morally wrong about what they had done here. He didn't like being described as a hooligan, and he began to question the attack on Connolly House. Ironically, only a handful of years later, Bob Doyle was in Spain fighting for the Spanish Republic, you know, fighting uh, on, on the side of the left against Franco. 
So Bob Doyle went over only a handful of years from laying siege to Connolly House to fighting in the Spanish Civil War. But unlike Bob Doyle, you know, a lot of the crowd that attacked the building on the 27th of March felt that they were morally right, so much so that they came back the next night and they'd done it again on the 28th of March. And not only did they attack Connolly House, they attacked the Irish Workers' College on Eccles Street. And they sought out other left-wing buildings around the city to attack. Again, the fire brigade were attacked when they came here on the 28th of March. But there are significant numbers of Gardaí here. Now, one of the men inside said, from inside, it looked like the Gardaí were more interested in keeping traffic moving on Capel Street than they were in protecting Connolly House. So the men inside were armed, should the worst come to the worst. The following night, the 29th of March, was definitely the worst night in terms of the violence here on Great Strand Street. There have been a couple of hundred people here on the 27th and the 28th of March. On the 29th, the Gardaí thought something in the region of five to 6,000 had gathered on Great Strand Street. Now, what's interesting about the Garda report is that they say, you know, these are not what you would expect. They're, they're um, in many cases, well-dressed young women, uh, as well as young men. They're a respectable Catholic mob that come here to attack Connolly House. On the 29th of March, they succeed in getting into the building. There's a furniture store next door, and it's through the furniture store that they managed to make their way in the back entrance of Connolly House. Now, the men inside fire shots over the head of the crowd outside, and it's remarkable no one was killed. It showed great restraint, actually, on the, on the side of the men uh, who were inside Connolly House. They're forced to flee from the building, and they do so in some fashion. They make for the rooftops, and they make in the direction of Capel Street, and they end up knocking on the back door of a business premises on Capel Street, which brings them inside to an Italian fish and chip shop where they enjoy a meal of fish and chips before making their way out and indeed through the crowd that are still laying siege to Connolly House. Now, in that great photograph, which shows two police officers, two members of Angarda Sheikana inside Connolly House after the siege, you notice the petrol can, which was left behind by the crowd. What's ironic about that, you know, Having laid siege to this building and talking about foreign influences, if you look at the petrol can, what do you see? The letters BP, British Petroleum. They used BP petrol to lay siege to Connolly House.